In this tutorial, we're going to go over how to add a shared parameter to an adaptive component. This same process can be applied to pattern-based components as well. And then we will load that family into the project and create a schedule from that shared parameter. So you see my project here. I have repeated elements that are my adaptive components. I hover over it and I get the whole mass family that was built in. But if I tab, I can select just one of those elements. That's one of, that is my adaptive component. I'll click it and hit edit family up top. That opens the family. This is the thing I built, the thing you've built as well. But now we need to apply a parameter. Parameters use the dimension lines. We'll use an aligned dimension. But first, you need to set the work plane along the line you want to dimension. I want to connect point two with point one. There's a line here that I can use. And then since it's a reference line, I can select a plane. When it's set, I'll hover over it. You get the surface first. I'll hit tab once. Now I get the plane. Click that. Now I am working on that plane. I'll click my dimension line. Pick point to pick point. Pull it out. You see it is just a dimension. Nothing smart about it yet. I'll hit escape and escape again. Now I'll select that dimension and in the label I can add a shared parameter. So we'll hit add. I'm going to do shared parameter. Okay, with shared parameter selected, it gives you these options to select or export them. I will select one. And I'm going to create, there's nothing there, so I will edit. And now I will create my new one. I'll hit create up here, and I'm going to make demo text. Yes. So now I'm going to create a new group. I would suggest using a group for each different component within your family. So I'd have a group for um, this fold component. And if I had a pattern based one as well, I'd make a group for that. So start, I'm going to make it fold component. Now time to create the parameter within this group. The groups are just a way to sort them so it's easier to find. So I'll hit new parameter and I will do fold height. And be sure to have the underscores because spaces will come into play if you try to use these in formulas down the road. And let's add another one called toe length. So I'm creating all my parameters now and all I have to do is apply them once I draw them in. The line I drew is the toe length line so I'll hit OK. Select toe length, hit OK. Now it pops in there. Next thing I need to do is choose instance and reporting. It is important to choose reporting because then each value will be different when it hits the table. If you choose instance, it'll just use the default value that was given when you first created the dimension. So this is the settings you should have. Hit OK. It updates to that. Now let's add the fold height. When it's set the work plan, I'm doing the same exact process, except I'm getting for the vertical. Draw the line. Pick point. Pick point. Pull it out. Hit escape. It's a dumb dimension, so I'll pick it, make it a smart one, add parameter, shared, select, fold height, perfect. Hit that, instance, reporting, hit OK. It's smart, now we're good to go. So it has that. Now in the case that you needed to change the values, you can always go to the family types. Click that. Here's those parameters. You can choose modify. You can set it here. You can select, change it to be a different parameter. You can edit by adding more. You can do all of that through the family types dialog. I'm just going to hit OK here. Now I need to load it back into my project. I don't have to go through the mass into it. I can go straight back into the project. It'll overwrite those parameters. Now, time to make the schedule. Let's go to View, Schedules, Schedule and Quantities. We want it to keep it multi-category, that way the values pop up, and we can put our name here. So I'll put fold component. Now on the list is all the parameters, and if you notice there's my fold height. Let's go ahead and add that. And my other one was toe length. Take that, add it. I can also add the family name, family and type, other things that you want to do. Let's just do family for now. Now it's at the bottom, I want to put it this to the left as far as the columns go, so I'm going to move it up to the front. Now I'll go to filter, and I'm going to make it that it only shows when they exist. 
That way if you have blanks in your model, you don't have to worry about them because it will only show the ones that exist. Let's do that. We can sort. We'll come back to that. But there's also formatting to change the fonts and the appearance. So I'll hit OK. There they are. All the values are there and they're unique. That was because we chose instance with the reporting parameter. If I will go back and change it to be just instance using the family types, let's say toe length is only instance, not reporting. What you'll notice is you'll see. We'll load it back in. Okay, let's go to that schedule. It's on the side. They're all the same because the reporting parameter allows them to be unique. So unless you keep it as reporting, it'll only do that default value. So let's flip that back. Hit OK. Load into project again. Override. You can also load it back into the original family that you brought in that it was in. That way it'll always be current in both. That's the correct way and this also works as a shortcut way. Let's go back to that schedule. It's all unique again. Say let's sort them by fold height and then by toe length so that they're in some kind of order. We can go to sorting and grouping. Sort by fold height, ascending, that's fine. Then sort by toe length and let's put a grand toll at the bottom. So now they're sorted and it gives me that they have 12 components. So now we have a smart field. And that is scheduling in a nutshell. Now we just have to get on a sheet. So we'll go to view, we'll do sheet. Let's just use the default one. You use the one that you've already been using. And then now since it's just a view, you can just click and drag it right onto your screen. You put it there, it automatically updates if you add fields. We can split it, then you can shorten the list, lengthen the list, split it again. Do this until it fits onto your page. And if it gets too long, you can even move some of these and you could take one and move it off the page. That way it won't print.